Explaining the Three Kingdoms Period for many centuries, the Han Dynasty had ruled China, with an emperor at its head, with no significant outside threats to threaten its rule. However, as these centuries went on, a series of child emperors had come into power after their parents had died, leading to a powerful eunuch faction to heavily influence the young emperors. By the 180s CE, famine and disease spread throughout all of China. However, the government would do nothing about this. Because of this, in 184 CE, the presumed sorcerer, Zhang Jiao, would lead a rebellion of peasants and former military veterans due to the fact that they had all suffered from disease, famine, and high taxes. This would become known as the Yellow Turban Rebellion. The emperor and the eunuchs were unable to handle the situation and so would be forced to give greater autonomy to warlords across China. These warlords would gather armies loyal to themselves and would begin fighting the Yellow Turban rebels. Eventually, Zhang Zhao would die of natural causes, leading to the Yellow Turban rebels fracturing and weakening. However, they would continue to exist. After the emperor's death, the eunuchs would be slaughtered after killing He Jin, the emperor's uncle. While this slaughter was going on, peasants within the capital of Luoyang would begin to riot, leading to the emperor's palace being set ablaze. Dong Zhou, one of the most powerful warlords in all of China, would arrive at Luoyang and would find the emperor and his brother outside of the capital, leading to him seizing the capital. Dong Zhou would then place the emperor's younger brother into power and would then poison him. Dong Zhou, who is now threatened by a coalition of southern warlords, would sack the capital and move it to a defensive stronghold at Chang'an. Dong Zhou would rule over China for three years before being killed by his adopted son, Lu Bu, after some very strange events. After Dong Zhou's death, China would be divided into many warring states, which would all want to unite China under their rule. During this period, the emperor became prone to being manipulated by powerful warlords, such as Cao Cao. Cao Cao was a powerful warlord in the north of China, who had absorbed the remnants of the Yellow Turban rebels into his army and had executed Lu Bu. With one of, if not the largest army in all of Asia, Cao Cao would consolidate the north before pushing south. Two warlords, Liu Bei and Sun Qian, fearing takeover from Cao Cao, would form an alliance. Cao Cao had 200,000 troops, and combined, the allies of Liu Bei and Sun Qian had only 50,000. Cao Cao would have to cross the mighty Yangtze River to consolidate the south. However, his forces were exhausted and sick, and were not very comfortable on ships. When Cao Cao's forces and the Allies' forces met at Wulan, Cao Cao's forces were unable to break the Allied forces. Cao Cao would then receive a note from one of the Allies' general, who had said that he and other forces wanted to defect to Cao Cao's side and would bring them their finest ships. However, this was a trap, and as the ships came into Cao Cao's fleet's view, they would be set ablaze and would crash into Cao Cao's fleet. Cao Cao's men would continue to die as they retreated through the marshland. The allies of Liu Bei and Sun Qian had won the Battle of Red Cliffs. Over the next few years, the forces of Liu Bei, Cao Cao, and Sun Qian would take over the rest of China. Cao Cao would continue to try and take the south, however, he would fail, and in 217 CE, Liu Bei would even take some land from Cao Cao. The former allies of Liu Bei and Sun Qian would eventually fall out after some land disputes, and Sun Qian would win. In 220 CE, Cao Cao would die and would be replaced by his son, Cao Pi, who would convince the emperor of Han to abdicate and would then declare himself the emperor of Wei. Liu Bei would follow suit and would declare himself emperor of Shu Han. Sun Qian would join a few years later and would declare himself the emperor of Wu. Decades would pass, and these dynasties, or kingdoms, would eventually fall the same fate that most Chinese dynasties had. In Wu, Sun Qian's descendant became a tyrant. In Shu Han, a powerful eunuch faction came to power. And in Wei, a series of child emperors would lead to the Sima clan taking over the government. 
the Sima clan would recognize the weak state that both Shu and Wu were in, and so would make preparations for an invasion. They would launch a full-scale invasion into Shu, and would take it over. Sima Yan would then force the Emperor of Wei to abdicate, and would then declare himself Emperor of the new Jin Dynasty. In 279 CE, Jin would then launch an invasion of Wu, and in 280 CE, would completely take it over, finally uniting China. In conclusion, the Three Kingdoms period of China was a period of instability and division, where warlords attempted to take power inside of China. Thank you for watching this video on the Three Kingdoms period.